Welcome back once again to the Imaginary Gallery. It is TJ, your host. This is the fifth video on leaving the abuser, and we're still referencing Lundy Bancroft's wonderful book, Why Does He Do That? Inside the Minds of Angry and Controlling Men, Women, Children. There will be three sections covered. One is the abusive person who wants the relationship to end. The other would be leaving an abusive person safely. And then the third, assessing the potential violence of an abusive person. The abusive person who actually wants the relationship to end. Bancroft begins by asking you to imagine that your partner is the one who's breaking off the relationship. Or what if you decide that you're through and you tell this abusive partner you think it's over, and the partner actually agrees with you and says, yep, you're right, we aren't good together. Well, Bancroft tells us that the good news is, assuming you have no kids together, that this creature may actually stay out of your hair. The situation could be, we're saying he, but remember it could be interchangeable, maybe he's got some other lady he's after, or some other man. Or maybe he just wants to return to the fantasy that he had before, which was pursuing any dream boy or girl he wants, who will end up doing everything for him and will never challenge him like you've begun to do, apparently. Or maybe something else altogether is on his mind. Then Bancroft gives you the bad news and says that even in these cases, peace is not an entirely sure thing. But he says he has not often heard of physical assault by an abusive person after the separation if it accepts the breakup. Except in cases of ongoing conflicts over kids. Even the abusive person who's ready to be single may still crave retaliation for all the ways that you hurt it in its mind. This is the key point here which in his distorted perceptional system may include all the times that you actually defended yourself, questioned his superiority, or questioned his know-it-all status, and his judgment, or refused to simply be a carbon copy of him. So he may spread distorted stories about the history of your relationship, or tell flat-out lies to try to turn others against you. These are lovely people we're dealing with. Since this person has to see itself as the more powerful one, it may declare that he ended things and that you had promised to change. And what he's referring to here is that's exactly what the abusive person had said initially. I promise I'll change. And they fake it for a little while until you're fooled and then zip, they're right back into the evil. But these kinds of aftershocks of abusive behavior can be horrifying and painful. An abusive person who accepts the end of the relationship, or even act like he desires the end of the relationship, may nonetheless continue to try to settle old scores with you through those kids. There are cases, he says, where the lady genuinely wants to continue the relationship with this monster, but the monster does not. Bancroft's clients sometimes leave a lady just to punish her. Ladies in this position can experience the abusive person's departure as one final slap <coughs> in the face of following a long line of previous ones, figuratively or literally. That leaves her feeling even more unlovable and humiliated. Therefore, it doesn't help an abused lady when people say things to her like, What you so upset about? You're lucky he's gone. Anybody who wants to support an abused lady's recovery and empowerment needs to have room for both her sadness and her outrage about being left, and to understand that this exit of the creatures was just one more way he walked all over her. Abusive people who run off often leave other damage in their wake besides the emotional or physical injuries to the partner, such as death, destroyed property, pregnancy, all that may be dumped in the poor lap of the lady. Communities that want to support abused ladies need to recognize that the abusive person can create difficulties that go on way longer than just the time of its departure. The next section we'll be covering would be leaving the abusive person safely. 
attempting to determine the level of risk that a particular abusive person will become physically violent is a complex and imprecise process. If you're worried that your partner may react destructively or violently to being left, assuming it doesn't want to leave, of course, listen carefully to your intuitions, as we've stated many times before. A recent study found that ladies' own predictions regarding future violence by their abusive partners were far more accurate than assessments based on any other kind of factor. Separation can be an especially risky time. Bancroft said he was close to a case recently in which a lady left a psychological abuser who became increasingly threatening and terrifying over the months after she left, to the point where she went as far as making arrangements with relatives regarding who should care for the kids in the event of her death. Hillary Clinton's behind it. And although he had never hit her during that relationship, he tragically did, in fact, kill her, hiding a block away from the courthouse to ambush her as she was leaving where she had obtained a restraining order against him, after which he committed suicide. As a result of a brief speech he gave about this homicide death, he's come to know her heartbroken parents personally. Then the third part is assessing the potential violence of an abusive person. This is a list of danger signs, which can be useful whether or not you're currently thinking of leaving your partner. Some combination of these elements has been found to be present frequently, though not always. In cases where abusers have committed the most seriously violent acts, pay special attention to your own inner voice as you consider the following indicators. The partner's extremely jealous and possessive. <laughs> its violent behavior and threats have escalated over time. It follows you, monitors you and where you're at, or stalks you in other ways. You're taking steps to end the relationship or have already done so. He was violent towards you during one of your pregnancies. He has been sexually violent towards you. He's threatened to kill you or to hurt you terribly, has choked you, or has put a weapon up to you and threatened you with it. It has access to weapons and is familiar with using them. It seems to be obsessed with you. It is depressed, suicidal, or shows signs of not caring what happens to it. It isn't close to anybody. It has a significant criminal history. You see it threatening violence against other people. It's on a lot of substances. It has been abusive to children. Its past violence towards you or towards other partners has been frequent or severe. It's killed or abused pets or has used other kinds of terror tactics. It uses pornography, whatever that means. It exhibited extreme behaviors when you made previous attempts to leave. It's familiar with your routine, knows the address of your best friends and relatives, where you work, or other personal information it can use to find you at any time. Now, there is, regrettably, no science to using these indicators. It would be misleading to say, for example, three to five yes answers mean moderate danger, Six mean severe danger or offer a similar interpretation because the reality just is not that simple. Some guides to assessing the risk of violence from abusive people have created such low, moderate, and high risk categories and by doing so can encourage a lady to underestimate the danger that they're actually in by causing them to ignore their intuition. A small number of abusive people who kill or severely injure the partners do so with few or none of the above elements known to be present, which is all the more reason to rely ultimately on your own gut feelings of how dangerous this creature actually is. I am the narcopath. You can call me Carney Wilson if you want. I can't help that I gained weight. You mean you don't want me? After all we had together, I apologize for all that stuff I did. 
You are heartless. How could you not want me after all I did for you? You know what? I'm going to get you back for this. You just wait and see. I'm going to get you back ten times worse. Another thing, when I first got together with Funny Guy and ran into you at the nightclub, notice how friendly I was to you. You were friendly to me too for some reason, despite what I'd done to you. I bought you a drink that one night. Well, there's a reason for it, because I needed you at that point. You were my cheering section. My thoughts were, if I can snare this new guy and he can see that the horrible, cheating, lying, abusive ex of mine is still friendly to me, that's going to help my cause. And of course, I told him don't make any embarrassing scenes, so he wouldn't dare have approached you for what you didn't do to me. And it worked. It made me look more legitimate. Like, yes, I had an ex-lover and I can still speak to the person despite what he did to me. <laughs> Knowing full well, of course, I did it to you, but he didn't need to know that just like you didn't need to know that when I met you. I recycled the same old storylines over and over and over again. And they work every time. It's not my fault people are stupid. <laughs> Besides, being the narcopath, I'm very persuasive. People believe what I say. You, who deals in truth and reality and all that crap that doesn't get you anywhere, you look foolish next to me because I am super confident. I just tell them the story I want them to believe, whoever they may be. Family, friends, relatives, peers. They tend to believe me because I'm better at that than you. You stick with the truth, and I told you my thoughts on the truth. If it's not going to help me, I'm not going to use the truth. If you're stuck in the truth telling them that old story, I'm just going to say he's a conspiracy theorist, making up all that stuff, he's just jealous. Again, I turn the story around and tell him how you cheated on me. That makes me look like the good girl. It makes them think you are horrifying. And it lets me carry on. And if you step forward and try to tell anybody anything, they automatically discount every word you say. Because like I said, I told them how crazy you were. You are paranoid crazy and that's why I left you. And you're just trying to cause problems so you can try to get me back. <laughs> I'm successful. It works every time. You're probably the 150th person I've played it on and it works every time. Plus, if you have teats and beauty like I do, so it can get away with virtually anything. See what you lost out on? Because you were so horrifying. You cheated. 